Select Subjects does in Photoshop 2020. <laughs> We're taking a look at new features in Photoshop 2020, and today it's all about Select Subject. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning is so much fun. We're gonna be reviewing the new features in Photoshop 2020, starting off with a select subject. Now, super cool, basically you can just load an image into Photoshop, hit select subjects, and it's going to cut your subject out of the background, which is incredible. Now, it's been updated with Adobe Sensei, which is their version of AI. So they brought that technology to do a good job figuring out what the subject is in your image and cutting them out. So let's go ahead and see how select subjects does in Photoshop 2020. So here we are in Photoshop. We've got three examples here, easy up on the top left, then medium, and then down to hard. So we're gonna start off with our easy example. Let's hit F4 full screen, go ahead and zoom in. Now this is just our subject on a really light background. We have a fairly uh, nice outline of our subject, a lot of contrast to work with, and the background is pretty out of focus. So this is an example where I would expect this tool to really excel, like should do a really good job. So it's actually incredibly easy to do. Just go up to select and then down to subject, which is like, yes, please select subject. And it basically creates a selection around your subject. And we can see here, did it do a good job? Well, I do think it did a pretty nice job. Now, not perfect 100%, like we can see there's some issues here around, you know, the edge of your subject, which, you know, like that's understandable, right? It's like pretty much almost the exact same color as the background. But what we wanna do next is go ahead and click on our layer mask. So we have the selection active. Now we're gonna click on our layer mask. That's just like basically removes that area. And I'm gonna make just a solid red background and put this under our subject so we can see how it actually did. All right, so zooming in over here, pretty decent. It didn't capture like the softness of the edge. Like if I hold shift and click here on this uh, before and after, it didn't quite capture the softness of the edge that I would like and it. it is a little bit jaggedy. Um, the hair is pretty decent. Okay, coming back over here, uh, we can see quite a bit of error on this side, but again, we do have pretty much the same color uh, right here, like the white of her shirt is pretty much bleeding into the white of the background. So we give it some, some leeway there. And then the other thing that it did not capture here is uh, her hair under this area as well. So is this a great tool to start off with? Definitely, this is totally recoverable, by the way. This is not something where it's like, oh, I gotta start all over you could do a few th simple things. For instance, you could just go to your layer mask. Okay, we could use like the magic wand tool. Let's go ahead and just bring our tolerance up to that so it selects more. There we go. We just go to our magic wand tool and then fill that in with black. There we go. Okay, so some areas where it didn't suggest select. And then down here, you could even go in just with a regular brush. There we go. Just a regular hard edge brush here and just kind of paint white in to go ahead and fill that area in. So if it didn't do a perfect job, that's not a big deal. You can always fix this. And by the way, if you're doing advanced cutouts of any objects, I personally still recommend the pen tool. I know it's a little bit more manual than a select subject, but it does a great job. So if you're interested in learning about the pen tool, you can click Right up here, we've got a great free episode here on YouTube about using the pen tool. It's just, in my opinion, still the best tool for cutting things out of the background. Now, our next example here, this is a little bit more difficult uh, because we have our subject uh, really it kind of the same color as the background, and I wouldn't expect the tool to be able to figure out which is the subject is easy. Like, you know, it might include some of the background, it might include some of the floor. So we're gonna see it, even the shadow area, like that's a little bit tricky uh, for a cutout, especially for an automatic tool. So let's see how it does. We're gonna go to select and then down to subject. Okay, and then again, you can see just put a selection and it actually did really nice. A uh, Couple little things here. Uh, it did select our shadow, okay? Not the biggest deal in the world, but it did select the shadow. And it selected a little bit of that. I think it thought she was wearing like um, a little hat or something like that, which would be super duper cute. Let's go ahead and click on our layer mask. 
Okay, and then we're just gonna do the same thing we did earlier. We're gonna make a solid color red right underneath it and see how it actually did. So here again, where we see we have a, like a pretty well-defined outline, the tool did a pretty good job. And I would say for like quick mock-ups, this is probably totally okay, uh, especially for areas like this. I think with the state of this tool right now, we're still looking at a little bit of cleanup. Now, a quick tip here, if you go to your layer mask, you can actually go into your properties of your layer mask. So let's click on your layer mask. We're gonna go to window and then down to properties. Boop, 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 here it is. Cool, now I can bring the density of my layer mask down temporarily. And what that does is allows me to see through to my original image. That's really nice because if I wanna go through and like, you know, refine my layer mask just by like, I'm just painting white on my layer mask, for instance, right here, because I knew she would have a finger there. Well, I didn't know, it was a guess, but you know, <laughs> probably there was a finger there. Okay, and then I'm just painting black on my layer mask to go ahead and get this little guy gone. And this is just with the brush tool. I'm doing a pretty quick job here. You know, this is not like, again, I mentioned earlier, if I was doing this as a professional, uh, you know, retouch, you know, for a client, or if I was just making one of my own portfolio images and I wanted to do a very nice job, uh, I personally would still use the pen tool. Cool, so now what we do is just bring our density all the way back up to 100%, okay? And take a look at that. We've got a pretty nice mask on our subject. Yes, I did some cleanup, but all in all, a pretty good mask. Let's hold shift and click to see there's the before and the after. Again, we've got tutorials on refining hair. So if you wanna learn how to like refine the hair, you can click up here. We've got a great pro tutorial on florin.com just about cutting out and refining hair. It's fantastic. This is kind of a tough example. Let's hit F for full screen. Uh, we've got a lot of subjects here, right? There's a lot going in the background. Our subject here is on a motorbike and there's a lot of intricate detail here. Like even just cutting this out manually by hand would take a legit amount of time. So let's go ahead and see what select subject does. Let's go to select and then down to select subject. Now, as of now, there are no options here. This is just like, Cool, I selected the subject. There's no like dialogue where you can say like, select more, select less, whatever. Uh, but it's doing a pretty good job. Let's go ahead and check it out here. Um, our selection active around our subject. Again, where we have our hard edges and a lot of contracts, contrast, it's doing a pretty good job. Uh, what we wanna do, let's go ahead and click on our layer mask again. We know the deal now. We're gonna create a solid color background, put it under so we can really see what it did here. Okay, so select subject gave us with this, again, not horrible, but it didn't do much of the heavy lifting for us. So a quick little suggestion here. I'm just gonna go to my layer here. I'm gonna go to my magic wand tool. Now, there's actually a super cool feature within the magic wand tool. You can click on this contiguous icon. So if I click, you know, right now, I'm gonna click here. And because contiguous is checked, it's just gonna select like each one of these little spokes, right? Which is cool, it's just like, gonna take literally forever. If you uncheck that, it's gonna select anything that's similar to that. And look at that, it just selected them all at the same time. So I can go here to my layer mask and just paint black on my layer mask and boom, finish this up. Okay, now again, we're going quick because we got a lot to cover in this tutorial, but that's like, oh, yes, please. Zoom in here, magic wand tool again, click there and then just paint black with your brush tool. There we go. And then you can do the same thing up here. So magic wand tool up there. Just, you know, keep in mind that if you have a light colored boot or something like that, it would select that too. So we don't necessarily wanna select that, but here I am just kind of filling in uh, additional details. Let's go ahead and magic wand this. There we go. You can see it selected a bit of my tire. You can always bring your tolerance down if the magic wand is just selecting too much. All right, and this is why I say like, yes, we have these new fantastic tools like select subject that are like automated and super smart, but like not, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's time to like abandon the magic wand tool because oftentimes the magic wand tool is like the right tool for the job. So again, we're doing this quickly, but I just wanna give you a sense of like how these selection tools work and how you can use them in combination because 
You can use select subject and then continue to refine the selection and refine a layer mask. So you're not totally like stuck with what you've got, which is a big deal because you can use all these tools together and then all of a sudden we got a really nice selection of our subject done very quickly. So there's our three examples, easy, medium, and hard. Now, in my opinion, select subject, great. It's a fantastic way to start a selection. And if you needed to just do like a super quick, like composite a sketch, like are these images gonna work together? Select subject is fantastic. When it comes to doing a more like elaborate composite, something you wanna put in a portfolio or something you're being paid by a client to do, or just, hey, I wanna do a really nice job on this. Personally, I still suggest using more advanced tools like the pen tool. And again, we're gonna to link to that right down below. We've got a great free tutorial on the pen tool. We've got a tutorial on selecting and cutting out hair, makes things much, much easier. So those tools will never let you down. They're a little bit more manual, a little bit more in depth, but you have a lot more control over what happens here. So select subject, I think has come a long way. And with the use of Adobe Sensei, which is their artificial intelligence, they're constantly working on making that better. And the whole idea of artificial intelligence is that it makes itself better. So I think we're gonna to continue to see massive improvements as the tool continues to learn how to do a better and better job selecting out your subjects. What's your opinion? Are you guys excited about this new Adobe Sensei using artificial intelligence to actually do the work for you? Are you having a good experience or are you a little bit more old school and wanna do it a little bit more of a manual way? I know it's a brave new world out there. We've got a lot of automatic things happening. Uh, I wanna know what your thoughts are. Leave it in a comment right down below. Thanks so much for watching. If you wanna get more free tutorials from us every single week, just click on that subscribe button right up there. YouTube thinks you're gonna love these videos right up here. And if you wanna learn even more advanced Photoshop, like cutting people out of the background, for instance, take a look at Florin Pro right up there. We'd love to have you. Thanks a lot, I'll Florin you later. Bye everyone.